Hey, hello, uh, I'm James, and um, we're going to be doing an interview today with, uh, the, uh, with the Gangster Preacher. Um, so uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself for people who don't know uh, who you are or what you do. I'm the Gangster Preacher, that's what they call me. Um, I got a book out, From the Streets to the Throne, available on Amazon. Um, it's by Zia Blancas. On the streets to the throne by Zeb Blancas on Amazon. I'm from El Paso, Texas. Uh, I have a ministry called Gangsters for Jesus. And yeah, man, I preach the gospel all over the place. So that's, that's what we do. Amen, amen. Um, all right. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, pray in uh, for this uh, for this interview and everything. I don't know if uh, if you want to do it or if you want me to do it. Yeah, it don't matter. If you want to do it or you want me to do it, it's up to you, bro. Uh, all right. Um, anyways. All right. Uh, Father God, uh, we come in your mighty name. And, uh, Lord, that we ask that um, anything or that everything uh, in this interview is done uh, in the spirit of excellence, Lord, and that um, everything works according to your purpose and everything is done unto obedience to your spirit. And that, um, that you know, that any technical difficulties that might come along the way, uh, we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus, uh, and uh, we just thank you, Father God, and uh, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, um, and um, I just want, I just put this uh, little note in my, uh, in here, but I said that uh, I actually asked, um, I actually asked uh, um, Isaiah if, uh, if he wanted like the manuscript to any of the, uh, any of the questions that I'm asking here and everything, and he was like, no, we're going to do this all. You know, uh, I, I believe the term you used was raw. So you're yep, doing it all, all raw. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. So uh, just so you guys know, nothing here was pre-planned. So everything is all, it's all spirit-led. Um, and uh, I just wanted to, I just wanted to, to, to thank you and um, honor you for coming on to, uh, to onto the podcast. Uh, it really, it really is a blessing to, to have you, uh, you know, as a leader, and, um, and everything. Um, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's very, yeah, it's very awesome. Amen. Yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, let's, uh, get into, uh, the questions. All right. Shoot so, em. so, uh, the first one I got is once you found your calling, did you pick it up and run with it or did you hold off for a little bit? Uh, you know, um, uh, what, what I did is once I, I knew I was called, um, what I did is because I got saved in SEG, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I was in a prison facility. Then I went to a, a prison facility ran by CDC. Uh, it was called the Avalon Corrections and, and uh, then IHF. And that's where I got saved in SEG unit. And when I got saved, um, I knew what, what I was going to be doing for God. And I, I really um, had like a a Paul type conversion but what I did at that time is I went looking for a church immediately uh, to get into the word and I pretty much just kind of locked myself down with God for like a year because I didn't want to be out here you know talking to people not knowing what I was talking about and so um, that's that's what I did you know for a whole year I was uh, reading books like E.W. Kenyon um, Smith Wigglesworth uh, hearing amazing preachings, um, getting in the Word. I think I was getting into the Word maybe like a good eight, eight to ten hours every day uh, for a whole year straight because I wanted to to soldier myself up in the kingdom of God as a as a soldier, you know, and know the Word really yes. good. Not just that, um, I would do um, studies also on all different types of things. You know what I mean? Uh, even like. Uh, creation and and all that stuff so I could talk to um, college kids or or people that that knew stuff like that you know because I didn't know mm -hmm. nothing like that you know I I came from the streets and and you know all that all that bad stuff that comes along with it so I didn't really I didn't even go to school to be honest so you know uh, yeah I, I locked myself down for a year then after that year then I, I knew I was ready um, but actually what I did when when I when I knew I was called is is um, I got real close with God, listened, 
learn. And um, I was just still for a little bit, man, you know, I'm getting soldiered up, like I said in the word. And then once it was time, I was I was rocking and rolling for God ever since. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, man. Um, I love how you said that, uh, that uh, you know, that you really, uh, you looked into creation and everything because um, at least where, where I come from with my testimony was I was a hardcore atheist, you know, and I yeah. thought I knew everything, you know, and I, I, like, I would try and pick apart Genesis as much as I could. So, I mean, mm -hmm. like, like, um, that's, that's something not a lot of preachers, you know, look into because, you know, at least at the time, nobody could, could say anything. Like I had a rebuttal for everything. Mm -hmm. So I was, I looked up, I, lo I looked into all types of things, bro. Not just that, like. It was crazy because um, I, I even um, had, like, started studying, like, um, satanic groups and stuff like that and what they believed. And what I found is that they hit us in areas they consider are weak to come against us with, with their doctrine. Yeah. And so it's crazy because a lot of believers, you know, would tell me, oh, what are you doing? You know, um, you shouldn't be doing that and this and that. But it's crazy because it's just, it's really ignorance when you don't know. What, what your enemy is thinking or their strategy is if, mm -hmm. if you can know it. And and uh, so, you know, it, it was um, for me, I even got into it, you know, with, with stuff like that to answer them. You know what I mean? So I, I just did all types of stuff. But, yeah, creation is real good, man. There's a, a, a creation preacher out there um, that, that does um, preaching their teachings and, and schooling on creation. His name's um, Kent Hovind. Call him Dr. Dino. That dude's awesome, man. I learned a lot from that dude. Yeah, uh, this is another guy's name is uh, Robbie Zacharias. Yeah. Um, yep. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then uh, this is the second one. Uh, but um, what is what is something you wish you would have known before you started to uh, preach and minister? It. How much? Um, and really, how much heartache there would be? You know, like you know how how it was not going to be easy. You know, because I think the, the perception is that a lot of people except Jesus Christ that think their life is going to be perfect and they're never going to have problems, you know, and, and that's not the case. You know, we still have issues. We still go through through things. I call this this life on this earth, you know, as an ambassador from, from heaven, you know, because that's really all we are is, is we're here for a time and then we go back home. But... I, I consider it like a roller coaster, man. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down, you know. And life's like that it goes up and down and up and down. And mm -hmm. and you gotta you gotta learn, like Paul says in the Bible, how to be content with little or much, you know. Through, like Paul said in, in Corinthians, like through hungers, through, you know, sometimes fasting, sometimes being um, attacked by brethren, by, you know, everything, man, that comes along with it. But, yeah, I think that that was the thing, and and also people, man in your circle, you know what I mean, that, that flip on you and turn against you. I have people, man, long time ago that I started off with, I've been preaching 20 years now, and there's people I would say, man, I'm down for you, you know what I mean, I'm going to be here with you forever, you know, and, and those people are long gone, man, you know, and a lot of those people, they're either doing the exact same thing, which is doing very little for the kingdom of God, or doing what, what they feel, um, not what God wants. And um, also, um, you know, just, uh, yeah, man, just people, just people being, being crazy, man, living in the flesh, you know what I mean? Not, not, not being able to see things in the spiritual realm and open their spiritual eyes. But mm. if, if there was any one thing, yeah, it would be that, man, you know, uh, people, people flipping on you, turning on you. And, and, you know, there's even Jesus had Judas, you know what oh, I mean, yeah. around him. And, and he still loved them and still and still showed them love. And I believe a lot of times, you know, we're not expecting that. We're expecting this this great life, but it it's not, you know. In my, in my life, personally, a lot of times people always say, oh, well, new, new devils, you know, new levels, new devils or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I tell them, yeah, that, that's true. But also, you know, with new levels comes new grace, new mercy, new love. And, and you know, that also comes with it. I mean, but... Yeah, that's 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 one thing that I that I would say is I, I wasn't I wasn't um, expecting, you know, people in the body of Christ to come against me, and uh, and really be a, uh, you know, so so um, I guess hurtful, man. You know what I mean? Um, I kind of um, learned 
over the over time i mean we're pretty pretty much really quickly and that comes actually from when i was in the streets was to guard my, my my heart and not really let many people in and um so if someone speaks into my life it's it's my pastor or someone that that i respect or someone that that has a lot of fruit in their lives mm. you know what i mean but i've learned that not to not to let all that stuff get to me you know all the the apostles disciples and jesus they all dealt with that you know what i mean so if, if there's one thing it, it would be that you know that i wasn't expecting you know all this all this hate and, and gossip and and fakeness and and uh, really evilness man coming from from believers themselves that are being used a lot of times and they don't even know it by the enemy you know what i mean to try to uh, cripple and crumble soldiers you know for god but yeah that's that's it wow that actually leads uh right into my next question um which was uh some of the biggest names in the bible like king david elijah the prophet and peter have failed uh, what would you say are some of your uh, biggest shortcomings, and what have you learned from them? You know, man, one, one thing I always say is it's always better to try something and fail than to never do it. Uh, but it has to be in an orderly, uh, orderly fashion, an orderly way. Because, again, I, I think um, I have spoke about this to quite a few people. I always tell them obedience is better than sacrifice, and a lot of times we, as as people that that want the giftings of God, want to sacrifice what we want, and then we expect God to bless it. But we have mm. to be obedient to God's word. You know what I mean? So, so for me, man, um, it's it's in it's in God's timing, and you have to be obedient, and and God will work all that out and do everything. You know. Mm. And um, what was the question again, bro, about David and all that? Oh, so I said, I said some of the biggest names in the Bible have failed, like King David, Elijah yeah. the prophet, and Peter. What would you say are your biggest shortcomings, and what have you learned from them? That's what I was going to say. Okay, what, what I would say, man, is um, it's always better to try and fail. I've never been afraid to try, um, but I've always done it with, with God behind me. And even if something has failed, uh, let's say financially, it still worked out spiritually. Uh, for instance, uh, in my book, I talk about when I met my, my pastor, Pastor Krishna. And I went out over there to Northern California years ago. And I was expecting to, uh, you know, make money and do all this other stuff with, in business and stuff like that. And that didn't end up happening. Actually, financially, it, it didn't work out. But I got connected to my pastor, and it opened many doors up for me. And um, so I, I still won, you see, but it, it was all still God-led. You know, sometimes we might take things as failures, but it's not a failure. Uh, this is a good example. You're bringing people up in the Bible like David and other people. Joseph in the Bible it says that he was being trotted around in chains. And, and back in the day when, when you were trotted around in chains like Joseph was, you were butt naked with chains on you. Mm. And and his he didn't do nothing wrong. It, it wasn't his doing. His brothers had sold him into slavery. They were jealous of him. It goes back to the to the one of the questions you asked me. You know that it, it's kind of crazy that that people act like that, and even sometimes your family. You know what I mean? But Joseph, man, he he was um you know going to prison for something he didn't even do. Yeah. And in the Bible it says God looked down on his life, and Joseph was prosperous. You see, so many times we might think we're, we're failing. Or, or even if this world would look at, at, at us or our circumstances or stuff that's going in our life, they might say, you know what, this dude's a failure. Or what did this dude do wrong to be in that position? Or, or, or why is that happening to him? He, he must be an evil person. You see, but this Joseph didn't even do nothing. You know, all, all he was doing was dreaming big, and people hate it when you dream big and you know who you are in the kingdom of God. Oh, yeah. And so with, with Joseph, you know, God says that. He looked down on Joseph's life and saw Joseph as prosperous. You see, many many people wouldn't see it like that, or even us ourselves. But God doesn't think like we think, and he knows exactly what he's doing. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and, and everything's going to work out for the good. But if I could say this, um, you know, one thing... That, that I could say I, I regret is 
not dreaming bigger, not not doing bigger things, not taking more risks, mm. you know, in the past. And I'm starting to do that more because I've seen so much fruit in my life and what God can do through someone that, that that's truly, you know, open to receive from God and operate in the kingdom of God that I would, I would have just dreamed bigger, man, and went for more. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, for sure. Wow. Um, uh, so, um, other than the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, which, uh, which three influences or people have inspired you the most? Man, I would say me, um, my pastor, man, Pastor Krishna, you know, he came, he came into my life again, it's in the book mm -hmm. too, yeah. um, with him um, being being a great influence on so many levels, man. You know, mm -hmm. um, with him, um, he he didn't he didn't he didn't come into my life to get anything from me, and so he he was he was such a an influence on me because he told me this himself, right? He said uh, one time. Uh, you have many people I look up to you, but you don't have a mentor. And he says, I believe God wants me to be that for you. And that was true. And he was hearing from God, and you know, and he heard from God a lot. And he never wanted nothing from me, man, except to see me grow. You know, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just like me coming out on your show. I didn't ask you for nothing. I didn't say, hey, man, I want an offering. Hey, I want this. Hey, I want anything. It's just out of love, you know what I mean, to, mm -hmm. to help your platform. And when you have people like that in your life, man, that, that, that love you and want to see you do good and don't need nothing from you and want to bless your life and get you to, to the next level in God, mm -hmm. honor that, man. That's that's a great thing to have right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. he's he's one of the influences, Pastor Krishna, a big influence. Uh, he helped me uh, along the way so much, you know, and I, I'm, I show uh, a lot of honor and respect uh, where it's due, and, and it's definitely due with, with my pastor. Um. Another person, man, I would say is um, Pastor uh, Neiman. Um, you know, out of here in El Paso, uh, he worked with me as well. Um, and he would, he would yeah, yes. what's that? Oh, I was going to ask, uh, where, what church building uh, does Pastor uh, Neiman uh, work at if, um, if he, if yeah, he does have one? Yeah, that's Abundant. That's at Abundance, that's okay. That's Abundant, bro. Yeah, here in El, pa in El Paso, Texas. So he's a he's another person that that showed me love and uh, would pull me aside and talk with me and you know invite me to their conferences with all all the pastors that were pretty much like um say hand picked you know and um he's an, he's another person I learned a lot from um, word wise you know with the word uh, another person that was a big influence in my life. I would say my wife, man. You know, my wife. Um, she's helped me a lot. Um, not just see what what God can do to the spiritual realm, but also um, help me even just raising our kids, man, because I came from the streets, you know, and always doing time. Started doing time when I was nine years old. And uh, so I had a very uh, calloused heart, man. And I was a, a, a real hard hit. And I still love God. But I didn't have a, a mom and a dad after the age of, of nine, pretty much growing up. And so for me, um, I learned everything through through bad influences, through homies I looked up to, up to in the streets, uh, through countless facilities I was locked up at. And it was all, um, you know, me getting the book thrown at me, you know, harsh punishment. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I was at first, you know, pretty pretty harsh, man, with my kids, because I didn't have a dad or a mom, I mean, so I didn't know how to be a good dad and a mom, I was just trying my best through the word of God, and uh, my wife, my wife showed me that, man, you know, because she came from a good home, so she showed me how to, how to love my kids, and be a little bit more lenient, and you know, and, and they're not all going to go down the road I went down, you know, they didn't have the same life as me, and, um, her just being a light, man. She's an inspiration to me too. You know what I'm saying? Mm, wow, man, that's, that's beautiful right there. 
Amen. Uh, I mean, there's uh, there's no better place to learn how to be a father from than from the Bible. Yeah, that's right. It's all it's all divine instruction from you know the Father. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Um, the next question is, uh, what have you read or seen recently that has inspired you, uh, rather from the Bible or not? Man, the, it's the Bible. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's what the the thing that inspires me is the Holy Word of God. Um, Bible. That's yeah. where I get I get I get fed from. That's where I get all my my fruit from. That's where I eat out of. I mean, uh, and God speaks to me a lot. I think a, a lot of people don't understand people like me. You know, the gangs preacher and and others out there that are hardcore soldiers for the kingdom of God that are truly pushing, you know, this kingdom and, and taking territory back from the enemy's camp. Mm-hmm. I don't think they understand how much time we put into this man. And, and how much we, 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 we sacrifice and also are obedient over sacrifice to, to God's call on our lives. You know, I've left a lot, you know, to do this, a lot. And, um, and I spend a lot of time with God. And so, uh, man, sometimes I'll get in the Word six hours, sometimes eight. Sometimes I'll get into the Word up to 14 hours. I mean, sometimes I, I get multiple sermons in a day. Um, you know, sometimes it could be a sermon every day, you know, but I'm always in the word, man. I'm always, I'm always hearing from God. Um, it's crazy because sometimes I'll even just be driving or something and God will tell me, pull over. And I'll be like, all right, God, and I'll pull over and he'll be like, you're going to preach on this. And I'll start writing a sermon on the spot, man, even sometimes when I'm driving. I mean, but I give my life for this, man. You know, um, it's not always easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a... Uh, it's me offering myself really as a, as a sacrifice for, for God's kingdom. Um, like I said earlier, you know, a lot of people turn their backs on you. A lot of people backstab you. A lot of people do you wrong. But I look to the word for everything because the word is God. Hmm. Yes. The word is God. And so um, for me, man, um, it, it, it just speaks to me in volumes. And it's and it's real, you know. It's a reality. It's 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 it's, it's living. Yes. And Jesus, you know, went through so much more, man, than than any of us could ever go through. You know, he was a real deal, and not just him, but the apostles, the disciples, many other great men in the in the Bible. So that word, man, feeds me. It feeds my soul, my spirit, my mind, my heart, everything. I mean, and and uh, that's that's the biggest thing, um, you know. And also my book, man. I mean, my book for me is is a a very big uh, accomplishment, and and God inspired man, and it's it's for people out there that well, really for everyone, but specifically for people that feel hopeless, that feel that there's no no hope, because mm-hmm. um, they did live such a crazy life, and um, man, uh, you know, for me, my book is it's it's amazing, you know. Also, mm-hmm. like the do- the docu little little docu series I have, and they're gonna make a movie about my life later on. Uh, but yeah, man, it's the the first book to come out of El Paso, Texas, um, of its type, you know, and it was done wow. through me. Yeah. You know, so yeah. yeah, so for me, that's that's unreal. You know, it's like an outcry in the bottle book. You know, like they had that one from San Antonio. You know, blood in blood out from L.A. Crossing the switchblade from New York. You know, with, with there's just so many. Uh, well, a few books like that, not really, not many, but I'm the first one to ever put, you know, God and Jesus and, and El Paso on the map for mm-hmm. for a, a project like this, a book like this, and it's a great honor, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, man, um, you know, uh, I, 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 I got through a couple of chapters today, um, I'm, I'm at about uh, page 100 some right now, and um, man, let me tell you, like, uh, some of the stuff you talk about is, um, is um, you know, uh, I'm a, I don't mean to put the focus on me right now, but um, you know, with my with my biological uh, with my biological father, um, you know, um, you know, he got into methamphetamines, and you know, that led to a lot of uh, abuse at home, and the and kind of kind of in a in a similar context uh, to what you had, but not as extreme. And uh, dude, it, it it's such an inspiration to see like um, you get taken out of that stuff, man, because you know he's doing he's doing 20 years right now. Uh, you know, I got aunts who are you know, still doing drugs, and I got cousins right now that are in the middle of God knows where, you know, shooting heroin, and, like, 
it, it's a it's an inspiration to see that you know someone who was as far in as you you know made it out and made it out like on top you know and that's amen your story really touched me in that way amen but, oh, glory to god yeah for real you know, hallelujah um uh but uh what skills do you think you learned from your old life uh that have been beneficial to what you do now everything um except for the you know the real bad stuff i'll do but you know back in back in the day i was a uh, i was a leader too uh but for gangs um i was a go-getter you know i was a hustler you know back in the days i was selling dope and doing all that stuff um everything man me being um fearless even back in the day all i did is um i switched that over from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light for jesus christ mm -hmm. and um and now i actually push it even harder you know for for jesus i think it's a, it's such a sad thing to see people that come from from my my background or the the type of lifestyle that i had and then they get into you know god and 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 end up going to a church or a ministry or a home or whatever man you know wherever they go for god and they become lukewarm christians you know what i mean and believers instead of them being the way they were in the world all out hardcore you know they they tend just to go into four walls once a week go home and do nothing else you know mm -hmm. that that was never me i was always someone that pushed the envelope you know what i mean that that um that people looked to as a leader and that people said, wow, man, this, this dude's down. You know what I mean? And, and and I just flipped that. I flipped the script on that for the kingdom of heaven. And I'm hitting this enemy, man, like I said, you know, taking this territory back at rapid rates from the from the enemy's kingdom. And I believe if, if anyone lives like that, and even if you didn't live like that, man, you know, a lot of people tell me, I have a lot of past friends and a lot of people because I, I preach with a lot of peeps. They'll tell me, oh, well, we didn't live like that. And I always tell them this, yeah, but the disciples didn't either. But they still died for this gospel and they went all yeah. out for the king. And, yeah. you know, so I feel like not just people, you know, like us. I just say that because if you lived that hardcore and you were, you were that raw back in your, in, your, in your past and you lived thugged out like that, man, live like that for Jesus, man. Oh, yeah. You know what um, I mean? And, yeah. Yeah, like, um, honestly... I really agree with you there. Uh, you know, um, a lot of people, you know, um, you know, they, they, they were out there. I mean, with me, I wasn't, uh, gangbanging or anything, but, you know, I was, um, you know, um, you know, like I was, I was dishing out, um, you know, hatred against the gospel, you know, I was preaching against the gospel, you know, and now I go, you know, 10 times harder now that uh for god than i do then you know and it freaks me out to see yeah. that people don't do that um yeah and uh it's sad too it's sad because in the in the times we're living in the way the world is it's needed more than ever mm. and it, it's so sad because this world man is, is throwing stuff at at this generation and everyone in this whole world 24 hours seven days a week man all year round, all the time. And so it's very easy for, for anyone to get caught up in sin and, and live this, this worldly lifestyle and then end up in hell, man. Yeah, dude. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and and if we're not doing it, you know, who is going to do it? Mm -hmm. Who's going to step up and do it? You know, if we don't do it, no one's going to do it. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, and then uh, another thing that um, my pastor said one time, uh, you know, pastor, pastor enhance, <laughs> but, pastor enhancement. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, he said that, that, you know, even if you don't have a crazy, you know, testimony, like, like he does, you know, yeah. he, he, as, as do I, but, uh, we honestly believe that like, you know, um, growing up in the church and staying involved in ministries and going to youth ministries your whole life, you know, becoming a youth pastor and then becoming a senior pastor, I honestly think that's a that's a better testimony than than mine. You know, that's harder to do than what I did. You know, mm -hmm. and like that's yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, uh, this 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 God walk ain't easy, man. You know, a long time ago, I heard a um, a pastor say, "You you think this is easy? You think you can do this?" And back in the day, before 
you know, I was doing everything I do now. I would say, well, what does this dude do, man? What does he do? Just travel and, and get money and stuff like that and, and do what he loves. And I didn't, I didn't really realize, right, because I was, I, I was just barely getting closer to God. But, um, man, bro, he wasn't lying. He said, if, if, if you think this is an easy, easy walk, then step up here and do it. Step up here, he was saying, big boy, and come, come do this. You know, and man, it's true, man. You know, it, it, it's not easy to live the life as a as a believer and, and push this kingdom, man. You yeah. know, it's not. Yeah, um, but it's worth it. Yeah, that leads uh, into into the next question: is uh, what is a myth about ministry that you want to debunk? A myth about ministry? Yes. There's so much. Um, I'll say this though. I think a, a big myth about ministry is um, people think you're gonna, you know, they want the limelight. Mm. You know, they want the limelight. They want the platforms. You know, but they don't want to put put effort into to getting the the platforms that God wants for them. But many just want the limelight out there, and I think it's a myth that they think. Oh, we're gonna be traveling. We're gonna be known. You know, we're gonna we're gonna be rich. You know, we're not gonna have as many problems. And man, that's that's not true in in all mm -hmm. areas. Um, you know, a lot a lot of times, us that do this, we do this a lot of times for free, man. Or 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 people take advantage. You know, if you have that kind of heart, and you will do it free and and not give you nothing, even just even just financially. You know, um, then then to top it off, I give a lot of a lot of merch out, uh, stuff like that. So that's that's one myth right there. Another myth is that um, you know you're not gonna have problems. That's a lie. You know what I mean, just because um, you have a platform or that you're gonna be known too, like you're gonna, you know, oh go 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 in here and everyone's gonna love you and respect you. That's a lie, too, because there's a lot of people out there are going to not like you, talk bad about you, put you down, mm -hmm. hate on you, you know, stuff like that. Um, but also um, the limelight, man. That's, that's a lie from the enemy, too, you know what I mean? That's you wanting the spotlight on you, and we should always be putting the spotlight on Jesus Christ. Yes. Not on us. If you're um, a true soldier for the king, you, you put the limelight on God. And... Um, I think a lot of times, man, they, they, they see people like me or other people out here that are pushing God's kingdom and doing some pretty big things. And they say, oh, man, we want to we wanna be like that or be known like that. And uh, But, you know, the thing is, is me and other people like me, some of them that I know, we could care less about all that, man. Yeah. Like what I say, you know, when I talk about the Apostle Paul, he never went into a, a city or, or territory anywhere saying, oh, look, the great Apostle Paul's here. They already knew that. The devil even knew that. Demons knew that. That a true soldier was in their midst. That a true soldier was in their town. He didn't have to have no limelight. They are the ones that, that, that built him up and, and, and uplifted him. And, and even sometimes even people that didn't know him and then got, got to see the way, he, the, the way his faith was used, you know, on this earth, that they would even think he was a god sometimes. But Paul himself always shunned all that. And, and gave all the glory to King Jesus. Mm. And I think that's what us true soldiers do. We ain't looking for limelight. We're just we're just trying to be effective soldiers on this earth for God's glory. Yes, um, definitely. Like, um, definitely agree with you there. Um, uh, what does the Bible mean to you? Everything. It's it's um, God's anointed word. It's what set me free. You know what I mean? It's Jesus and, and his word that set me free. And it um, means everything to me, man. Without without the word and without everything that these great men of God did throughout history that's written and, and recorded in the Bible, you know, we wouldn't have no hope, man, especially Jesus Christ. Mm. You know, we wouldn't have no hope. You know, we wouldn't have an eternal home. You know, it, it wouldn't have let us know that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary and when his blood was shed and, and just one drop fell from his toe onto the earth 
that it represented covenant from heaven to earth and, and, and made an eternal home for us. You know, we wouldn't know none of that. So for me, man, the Bible, the Bible means everything, not just that. It tells us to stay sharp, to stay soldiered up, and, um, and to know how to operate even in the times that we're in. Mm. You know what I mean? It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, I would say like, um, what are those things called, man, in the car? Like a manual. Oh. Like a manual book for our lives mm -hmm. on how to live, how to do things, how to operate, and how to flow. And that way you're effective as, as a vessel, as a tool for God's kingdom on this earth. Yes. Um, I got two things to say to that. Um, the first thing is uh, addressing what you said uh, right now about the Bible. Um, uh, being it being a manual, uh, one of my one of my favorite acronyms uh, for Bible is basic information before you leave Earth. It's all it's pretty much what it is. It's just basic information. It's before you leave the mm -hmm. Earth. Um, yeah, and then, right. you know, also what you said about hope. Um, you know, like um, like as for me, I I, I enjoy uh, you know science and um. Uh, there was an experiment done uh, with uh, lab rats, and uh, this guy threw rats in uh, in water, and they had them tread water, you know, uh, swimming, and um, most of them went about 15 minutes before they got tired and started to drown, and then um, uh, what they did is they ran the same experiment, but they put, uh, but they as soon as they started to to get tired, and starting to drown, they took them out, they dried them off, they fed them, and then they threw them back in. And these rats went for about, for almost like, for almost like uh, four hours, you know. And uh, like, uh, for me, I was able to apply that, uh, you know, to scripture where like, you know, you're constantly be thrown, you're constantly thrown around on this earth, you know, as a, as a minister, you're constantly getting attacked. But it's the, it's the hope that the, that the Bible brings you that you just, you know, that the, that the Messiah brought you that, that keeps you going, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I hope that it came yeah. across clear. But, uh, at least in my head, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but, um, uh, I guess, uh, the next question was, uh, what was your, uh, favorite God moment? My favorite God moment? When I got saved, man. Mm. You know what I mean? When I got saved and, and I wasn't saved. And, um, I had accepted, I had accepted that lifestyle. You know, I, I thought I was either going to die, you know, living in violence or either do a life imprisonment term mm -hmm. or die sick. You know, I had accepted that lifestyle. Um, I didn't care that I was there. I was a real hard hit, a real knucklehead, someone that didn't really listen to anyone. And and um, for me, man, it was it was um, me getting saved. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful for, for for people like my chaplain Gina, mm -hmm. that go to prison facilities and, and places, you know, where people are locked up, you know, preach the gospel to people, you know, people people mocked and made fun, and um, you know, told her, oh, that dude Weddle's never gonna change, right? That's what that was my nickname. That dude's never gonna change. You're you're, you're preaching to someone that's never gonna change. And I, they were all scared of me, and I was a, a hardcore knucklehead. I was a hard, hardcore dude, you know. And uh, and I'm the one that changed out of all of them. I mean, so um, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was that. It was, um, you know, Gina preaching to me and getting me saved, and where I was at, locked up, and you know, that's that's my my greatest moment mm. is is me knowing that I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. Yep. Wow. Um, uh, let's see. How do you feel about the uh, change in our culture? I think it's um. I think it's all turned for the bad. I think the enemy has has lied to, to so many people in the world and in the church. Uh, this culture we have now is like what it talks about in the Bible. They don't care about nothing but themselves. Um, lovers lovers of themselves, like it says in the Bible. Um, disrespectful of their parents. You know, all that stuff, man. 
I think this 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 culture that we have nowadays is is so far gone, and the enemy is doing such a great work um, that it's sad. And instead of um, the culture of believers like us standing up, stepping up, soldiering up, and going out here and preaching truth, we're just preaching stuff people want to hear so we don't offend them. Yeah. And then nothing ever changes. And and for me, that's a that's a big misconception, man, a big lie of the enemy because. I mean, I, I understand sometimes people don't like to hear it. Sometimes people want to hear truth. But that's the only thing that's going to shift and change things in this culture and in people's lives. And if, if we're not out here being the real deal and living what we're saying, and we're just always taking this as a game like this culture does nowadays, and, you know, it's, 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 a, it's not a good thing. I mean, this, this culture needs Jesus more than ever, and soldiers need a rise more than ever. And, and preach this gospel. That's why I believe that we're we're living in, in end times and that we are the remnant that's rising to take territory back from the enemy's camp and we're the remnant, you know, that 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 is rising that no one else thought would be used. You know, like the scum of the earth, the the nobodies, the the, the ones that were, were cast out like trash. You know, the ones that, that that Satan said, Man, I gotta hold them, I'm gonna kill them and send them to hell You know, and we're we're being stripped out of his hands into God's glorious light and, and saving souls, man, you know, for God's kingdom in these end times. And and we're meant to be here. The remnant is rising for this culture. But the culture, what I think of it right now is they're lost, man. You know, they, 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 they take more than they give. Um, they always think they're right. They don't want to be corrected. And, and it's not even just young people. It's other people that are in the, the kingdom of God, other people that, that have churches, other people that are believers. It's people in the world. It's everyone. No, no one want, really wants to hear truth. They all want to think they know it all and, and do what they want to do and um, have no loyalty, have no respect, have no honor. And, and then they think stuff's going to go right for them. You know, it, it's not, you know, it's not, you know, we have to, we have to honor our king. We have to be the real deal. We have to walk the walk and talk the talk. You know, we, we have to be who God called us to be. We have to know who we are in, in God, in this culture. And that's one thing that this culture is lacking tremendously is knowing who they are in God. Mm. Because they're not hearing truth anymore most of the time. I would say 99% of the time they're not hearing truth anymore. Um, so for me, it's, it's sad, man, but that's why I understand that we have a great work here to do as well. The people that are here that are true soldiers. Yeah. Wow. Um, couldn't agree with you more in that area and what you said there. Um, and, um, um, But uh, what would you tell a kid who's getting in, in, uh, you know, involved in the wrong cra crowd, whether it be gangs, drugs, um, fighting, uh, detention homes, or they feel like they're going to go to prison one day or had uh, the same general mindset that you had? I would say it's not worth it to, to shift, change your life. You know, I preached at the detention home, um, you know, here in El Paso. I was actually locked up there a lot. And I preach there and I tell them, man, you know, because here at this detention home, you know, it's still pretty rowdy, but they would give you little cookies and milk before you go to sleep. And I'll tell them, hey, little homies, ain't no cookies and milk. When you start doing adult time, you know, in jails and prisons and halfway houses and restitution centers and all these places that I've been, you know, it's not a game anymore. And, um, and, and you could have so much stuff happen to you, man, that you don't want, you know, um, I've seen so many people, man, that the devil gives them a fake dream. It's a lie. And they start off shooting dope, man, having cars, having money. Before you know it, they're older. Uh, the devil has stripped them of everything that was honorable, everything that was good, everything that, that they had, that they thought they had in, mm. in this world and, and, and operating with the devil. And, um, and the good traits that God had gave them, man, you know, they, they, they diminish. You know, you see these guys that once had 
a lot of uh, stuff and, and the devil put this fake dream in front of him. And, and, you know, it all starts like that. Oh, just do a little bit. Just do a little bit of sin. Just do a little bit of heroin. Just do a little bit of cocaine. Just smoke weed. You know, just take a, a few pills. Just just drink once. And they think it's going to stop there, man. And it don't. And I have homeboys, man, that, you know, they, they're sick. They, you know, they've been sick with AIDS, sick with AIDS and stuff like that. Sleeping behind dumpsters. You know, homeless. From having all this stuff. Because that's, that's the dream the devil wants to give you. You know, he, he wants to... He wants to give you a lie, and it doesn't matter even if if, if you're a, a kid out there that thinks you're gonna sell your soul and you're gonna get all this money. You know, in the mm -hmm. Bible it says, "What good is it to to you know gain the whole world but forfeit your soul? What good is it to get all these riches and do all this stuff, and and you're still gonna go to hell?" You know what I mean? There there's no point to it. Yeah. You know what I mean, so what I would tell them is shift. You know what I mean? I've lived it. I've been there. A lot of a lot of other people have lived it. Uh, a lot of other people have lived it even more. I went deeper into a lifestyle. I was pretty deep though. But there there is other people that, that are doing life sentences or on death row or stuff like that. They will tell them the same thing. Stray away from this. You know, you don't want this. There's no love in that life. All that stuff that you think your homeboys or, or people you're doing drugs with or you know, whatever, if you're little ravers or, or you know, um, or if you're getting into homosexuality and all that stuff, all that stuff ends in destruction. It don't go nowhere good. Mm -hmm. And that's what the devil wants for your life. But Jesus came to give you life and life abundantly. John 10, 10 says, you know, he doesn't want that for you. You know, we choose that. And, and we shouldn't choose that. We should choose life. You know, God mm -hmm. gives us free will. Choose, choose what God wants for you. That's when you're going to be blessed. And another thing I'll say is don't think that, that this, this life, if you get into God's kingdom and all that stuff, that's not going to be fun because... I even thought that, you know, I'm going to get in, uh, if I ever get, you know, like saved or whatever, like, I never really thought until I did, but when I did get saved, I'm just saying in general, kids think like that. Oh, later on, I'll give my life to God or, or this culture, like you, you were asking me. They'll think, oh, we'll give our lives to God later on, we'll have time. Tomorrow ain't promised to no man or no woman. Mm -hmm. You might not have that time, especially with the times we're in. Look at everything that's going on. All the people are dying of sickness. Yeah. You might not have that time. And, and, you know, um, it just ends in death, man. Mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing good about what the devil offers. It all ends in, 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 in really true poverty and death. And I say poverty not because I, don't, I could care less if you have money. That doesn't move me. What moves me is the God in you. That moves me. But even if you're the richest person on earth, man, you can be the brokest person in, in your spirit and your soul, and you could be going to hell. It, yeah. it doesn't amount to nothing. I would say shift, change your ways. Wow, man, that that uh, that definitely hits home, man. Um, and um, just I just want to say this to, uh, to any of the viewers too. Um, you know, uh, Isaiah, how old are you? I'm in my forties. You're in your forties. All right, so yeah. you know, uh, just in case any kid on here, you know, they don't. Kid, any kid who might be watching this, they might, you might not necessarily want to be listening to somebody in their 40s. But take it from me, who's 17. I'm not even out of high school yet, but I'm telling you, I was so involved with with witchcraft and and you know satanic music that I thought like, look, I was gonna sell my soul, you know, die at 27, join the 27 club, and you know, and that'd be it. And you know, and really, what what all that stuff led me to uh, with you know with drugs and everything was to was to treatment centers psychiatric treatment centers staying there a month at a time six months at a time four months at a time and you know uh you know suicide attempts and all and all this crazy stuff you know and it it just it never pop it nothing didn't profit me a single thing i didn't gain a single thing from it um and it, you know that that whole lifestyle is a lie you know yeah. straight from the enemy mm -hmm. um uh, but that's 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 uh, sorry. That's all I had to add. That's all I had to add there. But um, uh, let's see. What would you say uh, was your was your biggest adversary adver adversity uh, that you had to overcome? Hmm. I'd say myself. Yeah. I think um, the biggest uh, weapon the enemy uses against you is you. And a lot of people don't know that or see that or understand that. 
Um, whenever there's limitations on you, it comes from you. Are you allowing people to sow seeds in your mind that grow and make you feel like you can't do something? And uh, I would say, uh, what was that, bro, again? <laughs> Sorry, I... <laughs> That's uh, all good. <laughs> uh, what was your biggest adversity that you had to overcome? You, yeah. That's what I was saying, you. Um, yeah, me, man. Just, you, you know, a lot of times it's us. A lot of times we, we do stuff that hinders our own walk. We do stuff, like I say, we want to do. It hinders our own walk. Um, like I said, we allow people to speak into our lives. It hinders our own walk. Yeah. Um, and I'm saying people speak into our lives when it's someone that's around that's negative or that's not there to build you or see you go to the next level. And God, like I said, with my pastor, um, it's, it's people that are, that are just there to pretty much mimic gossip, put you down, stuff like that. And we allow that in. And then, um, it, it, it kind of hinders our walk. So if, if I would say the one thing, be you, yeah. ourselves, against ourselves. You know what I mean, you have to you have to believe um, this word 100% over over anyone, anything, and even over yourself. Because even sometimes God will speak to you some stuff that's crazy, and you'll be like, "What is that really God?" And you have to do it mm -hmm. because that's not God. That's you doing that. God wants you to take the next step and go to another level. You know. Yeah, um, um, let's see, uh, I remember the question I didn't write down in here, uh, but I'm trying to think of a good way to say this, um, but, uh, what did, what did your, uh, what your, what your friends say, um, you know, your old friends say, uh, you know, uh, like, once you got saved and everything, because, um, you know, like, um, with the way that I was and I had homies, you know, that, that definitely knew how I was, you know, constantly getting banned off of social media for hate speech and stuff. Cause when I got baptized, mm -hmm. my homeboy called me. and He was like, "Is this some sort of sick joke?" You know. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Yeah, my my homeboys didn't believe it. Um, there was a lot of them spread out throughout prisons in Texas and a lot of other places, and they didn't believe it. As a matter of fact, I, it's in my book too. Um, a lot of the stuff, well, some of the stuff, well, quite a bit of the stuff is actually in the book. So I would, I would, I would suggest, you know, whoever's hearing this, go get it. You guys will like it. But my homeboys, man, they were seen at a, a table in prison, and they told me, um, someone had went up to them and, and told them, hey, where was, uh, you know, uh, a changed man or whatever, and, you know, stuff like that. And they're like, yeah, right. That they all started laughing. They're like, you don't know where was. He's worse than us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, so they didn't believe it, man. I had a, a homeboy. That's in my book, too. And I think I put it in there as well, but his nickname is uh, Fofa, man. And he told all the homeboys and all the all, all the people, I will never believe that Wero changed unless I see him and he tells me with his own mouth that he's changed. And then um, and then I, I, I saw them all and started preaching to them all. Now I'm, a, I'm like a beacon of light for them, man. You know, they all look up to me. They love me a lot. And... Um, I shine my lighter on all of them, man. Um, some of them have changed um, because of the, ch the change in my life and me working with them. Now we're hardcore, you know, thugs, hardcore homies, hard hitters mm -hmm. you know, from the streets. I've done over 20 years, easy. And and now their 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 life is right, man. They're serving God or they're trying to do better. Um, there's others, man, that that have died that knew, you know, about me changing. And um, and others that just respected me, man. The thing is, is I was so crazy in that life. I lived such a hardcore life in that lifestyle that they all respected it. They knew I was no joke. So, you know, when I did change, um, they either didn't believe it. And when they did, when they did see that I had changed or some of them, they just respected it. They knew the type of person I was. If I was down for something, I was down all the way. I didn't care if I died for it. Mm -hmm. That's how I am with God's kingdom now. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, um, in your book, uh, you know, you talk about a, a situation with uh, one of your friends who was a, uh, well, quote unquote, friends uh, that, that, you know, um, you know, that was a, a Satanist. 
and uh, you know that uh, you sold your soul for uh, for a pound of weed, and like um, you know after that like uh, you know you jokingly mentioned it to your uh, to your grandmother, and like um, you know you got <laughs> you got prayed for, and you got like deathly ill. Uh, do you think that? Yeah. Do you think that um, uh, that anything like might have like, clicked in your head or anything that you know that like you know there is there is evil in this world, or that there is at least some sort of um, supernatural um, forces at work that we're not seeing? And you know I gotta be honest, I thought it was um I thought it was odd. Uh, but did I believe in the devil and all this other stuff for God? Mm, not really. That's why I sold my, my soul for that um, pound to begin with. Because to me, in my head, I mean, I was just a hardcore thug. Like, I was I was out here stabbing people, hurting people, robbing people, doing all, all that bad, you know, stuff uh, uh, that I was doing. And, and I could care less about, at that time, about God or the devil. And so when this dude offered me a, a pound, so I said, it's a free pound. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I'm getting a free pound. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. You know what I mean? So for me, it was a joke, bro. I took it as a joke. And um, when, when I told my grandma that, and she took me to go get prayer. Uh, yeah, man, I was almost dying. I was, I was sick. I was throwing out. I couldn't hold nothing down. Wow. Um, I was in the, the ER with a, a real high fever. Um, actually, I, I wanted to die um, because it was, I was in so much pain, but yeah, you know, man, I was I was just such a knucklehead back then that I was like, I was really ignorant, bro, because yeah, I, I still didn't think, man, God's real, you know. I, I was still thinking the same thing, like, yeah, that's kind of odd, but you know, whatever, you know what I mean. But <laughs> but yeah, man. Yeah, uh, man, I, I, can you paint this picture for me? Because in my head, yeah. um, you know, uh, just considering that, like, uh, El Paso is a very predominantly Catholic area, uh, did. Did uh, your grandmother take you into a uh, into like a into a Catholic church to get prayed over, or was nah, it like it was a building? a Christian church. Uh, it was a Christian church. Yeah. Uh, did it have like um like uh, the stained glass stuff in the in the walls, or was it kind of like how our church is at uh, Enhance? No, it was it was a a, a building like a, a brick building. Oh. Had a peak on it, but just normal normal building Christian church. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I just. Mm-hmm wanted that uh that picture to be painted a little clearer in my head because i was imagining it to kind of be more like a a cathedral in a way but um yeah uh, it kind of was actually because it, it it was a real peak it's a it's a real peak church and then it goes down and it's brick around so it was like a it, it actually was kind of like that somewhat but it was a christian church oh okay cool. yeah um uh so uh, and then, um, got a couple more questions. Uh, so it says, uh, what resources do you recommend that have helped you along the way? Um, in my God walk period? Uh, in your God walk, in your, in your ministry, um, or, you know, online, you know, things like that. Yeah, well, of course the Bible. Um, of course the Bible. Um, second... I would say um, E.W. Kenyon books. They're real good, man. They're really, really good, real powerful. It's um, E.W. Kenyon, K-E-N-Y-O-N. Um, he was a preacher from the late 1800s, early 1900s. Dude was awesome, man. His books are really intense, uh, really eye-opening. If, if you want to get serious with God, I'd say E.W. Kenyon. Um, what, I, what I watch... You know, I watch I watch many different peeps, man. Many different um, people on on TV. Not not like a whole lot, but I have like a certain select uh, few of, of peeps that I watch. I don't like getting into to hearing so many people because then you get confused. Mm. I mean, I won't personally, but a lot of people do. They get really confused, man. And you would think that it's just a new believer. No, it could be people that have been in church for a very long time. Because they're hearing so many different things in so many different ways. Um, you just got to know who God's putting in your path to speak into your life. And and let that person speak into your life so you can grow. Because if you're always looking around or always want to do something different or always hearing all these different preachers, 
um, it's not going to go nowhere. Um, you're just going to be someone that, that's like, I've said before, a busybody. Yeah. That, that, uh, that, that, that's just drifting around doing whatever they want and going different places, but with no true weight and impact from heaven behind what you're doing in your life. Um, so you don't, I, I would say you don't want to do that. Um, but also, um, Smith Wigglesworth is an awesome man of God. Alexander Dowie, awesome man of God. There's people I had books. Um, you know, people like that, man. You know, John G. Lake, all them old schoolers. They're real good because they packed a lot away from heaven behind what they did. Um, they were they were in their word a lot. Um, you know, of course, the Azusa Street revival stuff and all that. There's, there's so many different peeps that have have done um, documentaries and stuff like that about Azusa Street. You know, uh, stuff like that, man. My my pastor, Pastor Krishna. You know, um, I still get to hear him every once in a while, but. In the beginning, he would always be sending me CDs, man, packs of CDs, and I'd be hearing my pastor all the time, you know, just getting sharpened up in the spirit with, with my pastor, mm -hmm. um, my pastor's CDs, my pastor's words. Um, I'd try to be around him a lot. Uh, I'd let him speak into my life a lot. And um, him and um, I feel like one or two other people, Max, but those are people that had a lot of fruit that did it way bigger than me. And I think we should always have someone in our life that's an asset that does it bigger than you, that can pour into you, that 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 you know his brain his brain ain't or or her brain ain't all scrambled eggs and just going everywhere with you, that can tell you hey look do this and and God's gonna bless you and stuff like that and and give you solid scriptures and solid solid food to chew on, you know it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. It helps people go a lot further along the way. Um, but again. Like, like you were saying, you know, what is it about the culture? You asked me, this culture, man, they, they just want what they want. They want to be involved in every single thing and hear from all these different people, even people I love God. You know, they want to hear from all these different people, mm -hmm. and, and then they get they get swayed, you know, going to right, to left, to middle lane. Hey, they're going all over the place, and, and they're not going all over the place because my wife tells me, you go all over the place like you don't stay stand still. And what she means is I'm going everywhere, like hitting the devil in all areas. Mm -hmm. But these people are literally not not knowing who they're called to be in Christ because they 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 can't stay somewhere listening to someone that's solid and and grow themselves. They're just trying to go everywhere, you know. Again, you know, trying to get that limelight stuff like that. Yeah. So I would say that man, those books and and having a a, a few great leaders, um, say maybe two or three max that can speak into your life and that you know they love God and you see fruit in their lives. And listen to those those few, because if you, if you if you're trying to listen to too many, um, you're gonna get off track real quick. Mm -hmm. Wow, um, definitely do agree. Um, and I also just want to throw this out uh, for anyone who's uh, who's watching uh, this far into the video, but um, uh, there is a um, there is a uh, radio. There's a uh, or there is a uh, there's a ministry um, out there um, in. Uh, um, I believe, uh, Chicago, no, it's Michigan, um, so, uh, there's a ministry in, uh, in Michigan, um, that specifically deals with, uh, with the homeless, and they have a, uh, program, and, uh, it's on the radio, and it's also an app, uh, you can download it, I'll leave it, uh, both the Apple Store, and I'll leave, uh, the Google, um, uh, links in the description, uh, once I upload this, um, but, um, you know, um, it's just it's just a voice dramatized uh, voice dramatized um, what's it called uh, like uh, testimonies and um, you know they've been doing it since the ni since ninety nine you know um, and uh, you know there's a lot of great stuff on there and um, I tell you uh, when I was in the treatment center uh, we were allowed to have little pocket radios and that's what we would listen to and you know that's that's how I got my gospel at least while I was in there because. Um, the chaplain at that at that hospital was a joke. He didn't really even chapel that much. But um, I just wanted to throw that out there for anyone who uh, was interested in that type of podcast stuff. Um, uh, yeah, and then um, if you were in my shoes, what questions would you have asked yourself? I think you did a good job, man. Um... I think you did a great job. I was actually going to say that anyway, so 
Yeah, I think you did. You, you asked some great questions. Um, that's pretty much it, man. If I was in your shoes, I would have, um, I don't know, asked someone about my testimony. But a lot of people already hear my testimony and know it. Mm -hmm. uh, really, I think I think you did a great job overall. Yeah. All right. Um, and then, uh, where can people, uh, where can people, uh, find, um, uh, your book, um, and, uh, where can people find, uh, your social media and, uh, your merch? Um, you can, um, get my book on Amazon and it's, uh, called From the Streets to the Throne by Isaiah Blancas. Mm hmm and there's a picture of me on the back right there, too, with some description on it. But it's called From the Streets to the Throne by Isaiah Blancas. That's on Amazon. Yeah. You guys can get my book there. Um, and if you want merch, man, um, you guys can, I, I think it's uh, uh, me... www.gangsterpreacher.com. And I have um, some merch on there a little bit. Um, but also on YouTube, I'm under Gangster Preacher. You could YouTube my channel, and you can just email me there. You, on, on there, you'll see um, some videos on there with everyone wearing Gangster for Jesus from the streets to the throne hoodies or beanies, hats, shirts, um, all different types of stuff, man. So I got uh, some video uploads there. You're more than welcome to just email me. Mm -hmm. um, my email is, is, is on there. I believe, or on the gangspreacher.com, you could do that. But my email's on there. Or if not, you could just message on YouTube, and I'll, and I'll shoot you my email, and you could get some merch there. But, um, yeah, I would say I would say the book, uh, for me, is most important, though, um, to help people that are in need and, and that are struggling and don't have no hope. Um, I'll say if you, you have a, a class or a rehab or, you know, like James was saying, some place that... that, that kids or in facilities like that or adults in prisons and jails or stuff like that you could order the book and send it directly to to facilities from amazon and they'll let them get it um mm -hmm. but also just for people in general man that that need help it's just a good book to read man it, it's inspiring it gives hope um obviously god has gave me this platform um to bring hope and so yeah man I appreciate you guys. I appreciate the time, my little homie James, and and um, God bless y'all, fam. All right. Uh, God bless you. Uh, God bless you too. Uh, thank you so much um, again uh, for coming on and uh, just being a blessing to uh, you know to my YouTube channel and everything. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's it's not something I, I take lightly, you know. Um, uh, it, uh, it it honestly means a lot to me. Man, it's my honor, bro. It's my honor. All right. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, much love from the Gangster Preacher fan. All right. All right, do you click off here? I click off or what? Uh, yeah, you click off. It's because I got a couple more things to say after, uh, after you out. Okay. All right, man. Much love. All right, bye. All right, uh, so uh, like the Gangster Preacher said, um, the, uh, you know, uh, what is links and everything, uh, I will link his Amazon uh, down below in the description, uh, you are, please, please, I recommend getting the book, uh, it's a very good book, um, and, you know, honestly, it's, it, it's just such an inspiration, um, especially, you know, to me, uh, from the background that I come from, and then, um, also, uh, in my YouTube channel, uh, if you go all the way down, uh, there's, uh, some links to some channels, uh, of, uh, ministries and YouTube channels that I support, um, uh, so you'll see the Fire Preacher, Kingdom Music, the Gangster Preacher down there. Uh, there's Minister Salute, which is a local rapper in El Paso. Um, and uh, I think I already said Trillic, but uh, Trillic is a local DJ here in, uh, in our city. Uh, uh, and he's, um, he's a, an awesome uh, uh, musician, Christian musician. Um, uh, but uh, I thank you guys so much uh, for coming by and checking out uh, you know, this uh, podcast and sticking around. Um, and uh, you know that this... That, um, it just shows, this just shows, uh, just how, um, amazing God is, you know, uh, a year ago, I never thought I'd be doing anything Christian, and now, you know, here I am doing podcasts with this, you know, with this minister, and I just, I just thank, I just thank God so much, um, 
you know, uh, for this opportunity and everything. And I thank you. I thank God so much for your life. And uh, I'm going to pray for you guys real quick. Um, and uh, Lord, I pray blessings and I pray healing over anyone who watched this. And Lord, uh, if they do not know you yet, I pray that they have a heart to go and seek and find you, Lord. Lord, that if they are struggling financially, Lord, that you bring them uh, financial security, God. Lord God, if that they're struggling with drug addiction, I pray that uh, the people over this line, over this video, Lord, are healed of that. And that every desire for drugs is taken out of their heart. Lord, we pray for the people who struggle with lust, Lord. We pray for the people who are going through times of heartache and times of loss and times of grieving. So in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. All right. Uh, I just uh, thank you guys uh, for uh, for sticking around. Uh, God, God bless you.